Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, CAS Security and Production, From Zero to Hero and Back. Before we get started, I want to explain how you can participate. For this webinar, please make sure you have joined via computer browser and audio or through internet audio if using the GoToWebinar mobile app. Make sure your speaker volume is turned up. If you have any questions during the presentation, please enter them in the questions panel, and we will answer them during our Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Please know this session is being recorded, and you will receive a copy of the recording via email in the next 24 hours. I would now like to introduce our speakers for today. Docker Captain Javier Ramirez, Infrastructure Technical Lead from Hopla Software, and Jim Armstrong, Senior Product Marketing Manager at Docker. Javier and Jim, I will now turn things over. Hi, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, really excited about this presentation from one of our Docker captains, uh, Javier. It's entitled Cast Security uh, in Production from Zero to Hero. I'll just introduce myself real quick here uh, and then hand it over to Javier. So my name is Jim Armstrong. I'm in product marketing with Docker. I've been with Docker for about uh, two years now and work on Docker Enterprise products and Docker Desktop. Uh, amongst amongst other things. Uh, Javier, you want to introduce yourself? Okay, yeah. I'm Javier Ramirez. I'm Joker Captain. I work at Topla Software, which is an integrator for container-based solutions. Um, mainly, we are uh, the uh, probably the, this, uh, the biggest uh, partner in Spain for Docker. All right, awesome. Well, Javier, you want to uh, you want to take it away? Okay. Let's, let's continue. We're going to, to, to see how um, to improve security on our container-based solution with our um, uh, container-as-a-service environment. So we're going to, to uh, talk about um, um, how to improve this security from the beginning of, of, um, of all the components um, of the, an enterprise-based solution. So we are going to uh, get into our agenda to see what is going to be uh, our, our uh, webinar. So we're going to try to, to secure all the components of our infrastructure because uh, your container as a service will be as secure as the less uh, secure component of our environment. We are going to, uh, in this agenda, we're going to talk about um, uh, a lot of uh, features that we have on legacy environments because uh, this webinar was uh, prepared with legacy environments in mind where container-based new applications have now appeared and most of uh, legacy operations teams have now this kind of new infrastructure to manage. That's why we have this kind of agenda. We're going to go into networking, host, uh, uh, host security, of course, how to manage the engine, orchestration, images, containers, uh, uh, of course, the, the communication between all the pieces and publishing. We are going to talk about how to in ensure this security in these uh, um, uh, new infrastructures based on how we manage uh, or we have been managing this kind of infrastructure in bare metal or virtual machines. First step will be uh, networking. So when we talk about networking, we're going to uh, have these new container-based uh, environments that must coexist with our legacy ones. And of course, we have to take care where in the network our containers-based applications are going to live. So from uh, this perspective, we have application components or microservices that are going to interact uh, um, uh, with external services. This means that we have to choose which uh, network uh, subnets uh, we, are, uh, we really need to ports and containers. And of course, the service networks that are going to, uh, to be uh, necessary for publishing applications. And it's very important to um, ask our network teams uh, the right uh, subnettings uh, uh, to avoid IP, uh, IP address uh, conflicts. Of course, we can uh, use uh, uh, network rules uh, with uh, firewalls, and uh, we can uh, uh, use the firewalls to uh, cluster hosts 
to manage uh, um, uh, the, the networking environment that is going to be, for example, uh, in the uh, control plane for all these uh, uh, environments. But it's true that uh, try to manage um, uh, containers and port IP address with firewalls is not the way we usually uh, are going to, to manage this kind of uh, network interactions. We'll see different approaches uh, later for this uh, kind of, uh, of uh, security. Of course, we can still use VLANs. Uh, environments with VLANs uh, are avoidable, but uh, will we uh, get more complex to maintain and using VLANs uh, will uh, uh, allow us to, to uh, isolate uh, environments, but it's going to be something that is close to the way the Docker Swarm, for example, manages uh, the kind of network policies that we're going to deploy. One thing that uh, at network level is very, very important is isolate the control plane from data plane. But we are not going to use old fashioned network environment rules, firewalls, for example. Control plane will be the network dedicated to all custom cluster management process. Uh, and data plane will be our application based network. When we start with uh, how the, the, the hosts in the cluster are going to, to be managed uh, from the security point of view, uh, hosts uh, are the, the nodes that are going to run our applications uh, components uh, prepared for containers. So there are a few things that we have uh, to take in, in, uh, into account on from the uh, starting with operating system, of course, small OS or container ready environments with minimum non requirement uh, required uh, components will be uh, our uh, first choose. We have to watch out for minimum attack surfaces. And of course, uh, although this sounds obvious, uh, we have found uh, some customers that usually don't uh, use this kind of, uh, of preference uh, uh, operating systems or environments and have a lot of uh, non-required services and applications installed. So use dedicated host with minimum uh, applications installed. Just uh, the really needed to, uh, to run containers. Somebody asked, are, are, uh, are, are there any OS better than others? In fact, there isn't a, a specific OS for that. But uh, in many cases, you have to use your preferred uh, uh, OS, uh, supported OS, of course, with uh, a Docker environment supported uh, version. And it's a good practice to use uh, only the, the small amount of services. And you can use it with uh, uh, running in containers. It's, uh, it's uh, better. We, we, with this, we will get uh, the, the smallest attack surface uh, possible. When uh, we get uh, our, our host, one thing that we have to keep in mind is that um, all users that have access to our cluster host um, will have uh, the ability to run containers. At this level, users with container engine access will be able to run containers with root access which means that they can manage and change host resources and configurations. So you must be ensure that only required users have access to this host. Uh, we have uh, what is called security modes that are uh, Linux security modes. All uh, operating system, Linux operating system have uh, some kind of them. Uh, one of them uh, usually use cell Linux, others they use FPP ammo by default, and uh, in all of them, um, we have to avoid um, disabling this kind of, of security models. We want to mention a lot uh, this kind of uh, security models because they are part of operating system, but must be integrated with container engine to secure uh, all our environment. 
we can use uh, C Linux, a more, and SecCom is different because it's uh, it will secure our syscalls. Uh, um, we have to to profile what kind of syscalls we're going to to allow in our container-busted environments. And with security models in, in general, we have us, for example, if someone creates a container with host uh, etcd pass w, uh, w file inside, for example, uh, if we get into the, that container, we will be able to change uh, a user's password, for example, uh, and of course, the, the root password include. But if we use uh, C Linux, uh, Docker Engine is not able to chain that kind of, of uh, file in the host. So securing with uh, C Linux and uh, Linux modules is, uh, um, is uh, something very, very important. So don't disable them, never disable, disable this kind of uh, security modules. And if for some reason we need some special feature, uh, we must uh, configure a profile for them. So uh, this uh, help us to identify what kind of uh, um, uh, profiles are uh, needed to some kind of application, for example. In, uh, when we talk about system calls, uh, it's uh, very important to know what kind of system calls our container are going to to, to manage. So uh, by default, uh, the configuration that Docker Engine is going to manage will provide, uh, will only disable 44 syscalls for more than 300. So it's, it's not a, a problem and usually we're not going to, to, to need more than that uh, 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 syscalls enabled, enabled syscalls, okay? But of course, it is needed. We can add some uh, more capabilities or even use something that is not recommended, but we can use a privilege mode for uh, some of our containers. All right, uh, Javier, I have, a, I have a quick question for you uh, here. Um, in, in your experience, and you mentioned things like uh, like SE Linux and AppArmor, um, you know, uh, as, as tools that are sort of OS level tools that run alongside Docker. How much does an administrator need to know about those tools in order to safely run Docker? So, you know, in other words, do they have to create, um, you know, app armor profiles from scratch or can they just, you know, leave those things on and be reasonably safe? Yes, it's true that uh, it's something that uh, it's not normal, it's not general to have to change some of the profiles uh, that are out of the box uh, installed with uh, Docker Engine. But in some cases, you have to, to, to change that. But it, uh, usually, uh, uh, Docker Engine out of the box rules for both APPR or Linux will work. You don't modify anything after installation, uh, it, it, they will work. But it's true that if we need to use different paths, for example, for data path or data root uh, uh, environment, you have to use uh, non-standard port for pollution application or, or some kind of uh, um, uh, customized uh, configuration. We will have to add, for example, a port or a use uh, uh, take the default profile in Cell Linux and just add the different path for our data route. I remember that we have some issues with C Linux if ports or paths are changes after Docker Engine installation, but it's something that uh, usually just uh, uh, changing the default uh, configuration will work. So you don't have to be a, a genius in C Linux or a more to change the, this kind of configurations. So don't worry, it's uh, something that it's Quite easy. All right, great, thanks. We have reached uh, uh, what is called the container runtime. Container runtime is the piece that will uh, manage, uh, create, uh, of course, building uh, and manage uh, and run containers. If you remember, uh, Docker says we'll ship and run, and everything is done in the uh, container runtime. 
So uh, when talking about uh, Docker Enterprise uh, based solutions, securing container runtime uh, will mean a secure Docker engine. So uh, the first of uh, all the things that we're going to, to manage uh, when securing a Docker engine, we're going to avoid insecure registries. We are going to avoid any non-TLS uh, access to and from the engine. We're going to prepare uh, your engine to uh, with uh, your own settings to to customize all your paths, all your ports if you're needed, all the the settings that you're going to use in your environment. By default, everything will work, and by default, everything is uh, secure. But if you need to, uh, for example, change DNS so to not allow the um, um, address traffic, for example, or uh, you're going to, to use different DNS on your containers, you have to this uh, this kind of uh, changes in daemon.json, for example, just better than use uh, systemd uh, daemon files, for example. Um, we can change, for example, for secure or improved security in our Docker engine, we can choose, uh, we can change, sorry, uh, DNS settings, we can change CPU limits. We can change, of course, the, the IP address that we're going to use if we use a, a multi-homed environment, for example. And we're going to use just one of the interfaces for all the container environment or, 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 or inter-container communication or bridging. So uh, it's up to you to use a, a different configuration than the default one, but be sure that the default one is uh, secure enough. Of course, don't use experimental settings in production, which is something that sometimes we, we have to use for, uh, uh, for example, when we use uh, to, to use uh, some metrics exporting. I remember that in, in, the, in the past, but I'm not sure if right now it's uh, in the experimental mode, but try to not use experimental settings in production, which is something that we, un we usually don't do with any other uh, kind of applications. We have talked about uh, the user access to our uh, host. Of course, accessing uh, the, the, the host that uh, run the container runtime is a problem. So we have to take uh, care of who access Docker engine configurations, uh, networks, uh, bridges, and of course, the sockets. Remember that everyone with root access uh, to, to our host will be able to change Docker engine uh, and everything um, uh, it will uh, it will be able to run, for example, containers that uh, with uh, can change things in your environment. So um, all the applications are, um, of course, all the things that you're going to run in your container host must be secure with only access to that engine to the people, the right people who is going to manage the, this environment. And of course, if we're going to allow remote uh, uh, sockets, uh, sorry, remote access to our socket, we're going to use your always uh, TLS, something that usually uh, uh, enable or set by hand uh, in the past, but something that you usually uh, manage with Docker Enterprise solutions and something that we're not going to have to configure by hand. We're going to uh, go back to secure modules because we have been talking about security models in the past with uh, 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 how they manage uh, things in our host. But of course, when we uh, talk about container engine, we're going to talk uh, again about, uh, about security models. We will enable uh, the use of security models with Docker uh, because they have, uh, uh, Docker itself has its own uh, profiles and if we need to, to create, as we told uh, before, uh, we need to create a new one. We're going to use uh, this uh, integration between Docker Engine and this uh, kernel security prepared models. Uh, by default, uh, use this, uh, by default is not enabled, for example, the use of security uh, C Linux. So uh, used, uh, uh, we used to, to configure uh, C Linux in, um, in environments where it is available. And if we, for some reason, want to or need to uh, a 
avoid this kind of rules, we can use it just for some of it, of, uh, of a special uh, containers. So by default, uh, security Linux must be enabled. And of course, when talking about SECOM, we can bypass all future Cisco's restrictions using what is called privilege mode. Uh, but usually don't use this mode unless you know what you're doing because it allows all system calls and all containers uh, using privilege mode will run without any resource limits. So use it with, uh, with care. It is better to use uh, and understand uh, what are the required uh, system calls that this container, this special container will need. So we can add only those capabilities. We have uh, added here uh, login because usually um, uh, try to isolate uh, or separate login, uh, a different login button for what is uh, the logs about the system and the logs about the engine or even uh, better, the logs about the containers. Keep in mind that everyone with rough access to our environment or uh, with access to all the logs in your environment will read everything between containers. For example, if you have uh, something in your container log regarding some users uh, um, information, you have to uh, take care who reads that kind of logs. So usually it's good, uh, it's a good practice to uh, isolate uh, system and engine uh, logs from what is uh, in containers. And we have added uh, here sandboxing. Sandboxing is something that it's, um, it's uh, uh, right now uh, only available in Hyper-V solution in Windows host, but uh, it's true that uh, the newest uh, 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 Docker engine release uh, will have, which is called a non-root uh, non engine, will, uh, and will we be able to uh, try to have a, not a real sandbox environment, uh, because we are not going to isolate uh, with an Hyper-V isolation, for example, which is uh, in, in Windows that adds a new layer of hypervision between uh, the host kernel and the container kernel. Uh, but uh, rootless uh, 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 mode for Docker engine will allow us to run Docker engine without uh, having to uh, access root uh, uh, for running this, uh, the, the, the container run. We reached the uh, orchestration, orchestration layer. Uh, orchestration, you know, that is the, the the, the main component for an enterprise ready environment. So, uh, of course, if we talk about a container as a service factor, we need to talk about the orchestration component. Orchestration will manage how containers interact with each other and how to keep them, uh, all these this containers running if they fail. But orchestration will also add some uh, security facilities to our uh, deployments, which is very, very important. Docker Enterprise provides both uh, the main uh, um, uh, orchestrators, provides Swarm and Kubernetes on the same cluster environment. So it's very, very easy to, to manage both uh, if you have your Docker Enterprise environment. Both provide new features that will improve container as a service global infrastructure security. And as we mentioned before, container interaction is one of the main features that orchestration will provide. So both orchestrators will provide high level isolation that will allow environment different, uh, allow different environments if our applications don't need to uh, mix uh, and we need to, to, uh, we need to uh, launch our applications uh, on all the components without uh, mixing. Uh, the way they, they interact. Swarm, by default, will be isolated and it will uh, allow us to launch different services and stacks alongside without missing this interaction. For resource, uh, for resource isolation, we will need to use what is called collections. Uh, yeah, collection is a, um, um, it's a grouping, uh, it's a group of objects 
that we have uh, uh, different um, cap uh, in which you will um, add different uh, roles and capabilities to all the users. On the other hand, Kubernetes will need some extra work with network policies because the, it was designed with flat networking in mind, but we can get higher level of isolation. For resource isolation, we will use what is called namespaces, different with uh, uh, container-based namespaces. And we can add uh, quotas to limit the maximum usage per namespace, for example. But of course, this is for um, general use environments. But if we need uh, 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 extra isolation between different teams, or even we're going to uh, even different organizations, we must think uh, different because we must uh, uh, take care if we are going to use one cluster, for example, we'll uh, deploy one common control plane, but we need to uh, manage different isolated namespaces or collations per groups or per customers, for example. And both of the is it's true that will provide facilities for isolating uh, even hosts for different purpose or different organization, which is something that we it's uh, that it's included with Docker Enterprise. And of course, uh, other solution will be uh, manage different clusters with this uh, with the multi-cluster environment. This is something that uh, is uh, very new and it's going to be something that uh, usually uh, people will demand in the future. One thing that um, uh, usually comes to mind when talking about security in our uh, container-based environment is which is the right way to manage, for example, confidential data, uh, the, the confidential information that is uh, in our application, for example, users and powers. Of course, users and powers require uh, of running or integrating some of our application. Uh, it's uh, our, uh, something that we're going to use for integration, integrating components, run some of our components uh, uh, of our application. And of course, it's something that is critical and must be uh, security stored. In fact, secrets uh, require both uh, storing and um, uh, manage the security when transit. When it's uh, uh, one of these secrets is required in, my, in our environment. So. The, the best practice for um, uh, managing this kind of, of, uh, uh, of secrets uh, involve usually uh, that we're not going to start this uh, kind of information in our images. We are not going to use it as environment variable. It's something that usually you see in, uh, in some examples in internet, but it's not a good practice for production, of course. We can use it in uh, some mountain uh, file during execution. There is something that if someone reads this uh, host, uh, is going to be able to read uh, this secret. It is something that is in our host uh, in clear, uh, uh, in clear, for example. And of course, it's preferred to use a, a, a secret uh, key value store, which is something that uh, it's. Uh, by default in Docker Swarm and Kubernetes, uh, will uh, deploy. Uh, it, we are going to be able to deploy these secrets in the key value uh, uh, too. But keep in mind that secrets are stored encrypted until uh, um, uh, the latest uh, uh, one uh, uh, fourteen um, uh, with uh, with um, etcd three. So uh, it's something that we, we have to keep in mind. And in some cases, it's preferred to use a, a more powerful uh, key value store, uh, an external key value store. But of course, that using a, a Docker provided a key value store is, is secure enough. Uh, but it's true that um, we have to disable the access to uh, all non cluster communication, for example. We're going to use always uh, TLS uh, authentication when access the this key view store. We're going to encrypt data uh, on disk if it's possible, and 
in swarm uh, is something that is not related to secrets, but it's something that you usually use is a uh, auto lock to lock the access to the, the cluster certificates. So it's something that if it's uh, swarm is not locked, uh, someone can reach our host and take the, the, the certificates to uh, create a, a client or, or use a, some kind of, uh, of uh, communication with uh, those uh, certificates. We're not going to forget uh, that uh, orchestration will provide uh, role-based access that will allow us to manage uh, how to access to secrets, configuration, and in fact, all, all other uh, objects that are available in our uh, cluster. It is very important to use uh, orchestration managed accesses and long let uh, uses access Docker in Git directory, something that I have uh, um, found in many customers uh, that they usually they have a Docker enterprise, but they uh, deploy uh, applications directly using Docker engine. So it's something weird because they, they, this way you are uh, avoiding uh, the security uh, that uh, Docker enterprise provides. Hey, hey Javier, I have, a, I have a question before we go on from here. So, um, you know, this this comes up pretty often, actually. I think as folks get started, um, it's the notion of, you know, you could go get the Docker engine and get Kubernetes and you know some other pieces and kind of put these things together yourself, or, you know, you could go and buy a, a, a platform like like Docker Enterprise. Obviously, you know, I work for Docker. I'm a little biased as to which one I think is is easier and better. But um, can can you share your take on it in terms of you know, going out and getting something like a platform versus trying to build all of these things yourself, role-based access controls and, and support for secrets and other things on top of, you know, just the, the you know, open source components that you can go get. Is it is it really difficult to do? Is it something that people can easily maintain over time as they start using uh, the platform or is, is it is it uh, a little more challenging than that? Yeah, it's true that uh... Everyone who who has uh, uh, once deployed a Kubernetes environment, uh, and of course, if uh, uh, you deploy it with uh, high ability all, uh, of all of its uh, uh, components, uh, it, it's it's something that is not easy. So uh, that's a really good point because some of our uh, of uh, out of box uh, procedures we have seen uh, or I have read that will teach you how to deploy Kubernetes cluster when written with security in mind. It's true. Um, many of the, the default settings that they, they will going to, they're going to provide uh, in that environment are not uh, secure. So there are a few topics that will improve security when using Kubernetes uh, out of box without Docker Enterprise. The Kubernetes uh, the deployment that uh, Docker Enterprise uh, deploys is secure. It's, it's really secure because uh, it uh, it um, it, uh, it provides um, uh, high ability. In fact, etcd is deployed with high ability, so it's uh, it's in, not in terms of security. In, in terms of high ability, it's a real, real uh, good environment. And in fact, uh, in, in in those out of box uh, Kubernetes deployments, some uh, usually um, uh, they don't use TLS, for example, for API access. They don't use the role basis access for the API. Uh, by default, there are some anonymous access that are permitted. Um, sometimes even uh, uh, Kubelet are, are not protected uh, against other ports that are going to try to interact with uh, uh, different uh, uh, Kubelets. So they are not prepared for for security, it's true. And uh, I have found some of them even with uh, read-only ports deployed by default. So uh, they are not secure enough for a production environment. And of course, uh, if you want to, to have a, a secure environment with, prepared with security in mind and with the both orchestration, Docker Enterprise is something that it, it fits. It fits, it runs, and it runs secure. Perfect, thanks. 
we're going to to enter in what is uh, uh, the images images of course uh, are uh, probably for me is the the main component with uh, the with uh, container itself and um, when we talk about containers we don't uh, we have to take care of uh, the security in, in images and usually usually there's something that um, uh, admins uh, usually uh, ask how can i secure uh, my images because um, I don't know, as, uh, as an administrator, if I can secure enough uh, my images as base images for my developers, or, or I can uh, ha um, allow uh, developers to build their own images. It's, it's true, uh, something that uh, they usually ask. Well, uh, there are many options to ensure uh, security in images. Uh, the, the first one, of course, is uh, talk about the content of the image. Uh, first and most important is uh, keeping your environment as small and clean as possible. This is something that uh, it, it's, uh, it's something obvious, but it's true that this will limit uh, um, the attack surface. And if only required components are present in your image, your image will be safer than uh, taking a, a big one with a lot of components you're not going to use, but uh, it, it fits because uh, it's a, a template for your organization, for example. And when we talk about uh, how these, um, uh, the, the, the resources that are uh, declared in, in your images, for example, uh, we're going to, to look for uh, a solution or, or an environment where always uh, uh, all the resources are declared uh, everything that is going to be used for example ports volume and of course which users will run uh, the process inside the container everything must be declared don't allow that someone is going to to, to have to to imagine uh, everything around your your image so it's something that it's uh, if you use um, uh, if you declare um, use uh, primitives for declaring uh, your resources in your uh, docker files someone can uh, quick uh, quickly um, read uh, your docker file and take a good approach on what is going to use in, in your environment and of course, uh, using a, a, a declare a user in your environment is very, very important because by default, your container will going to use uh, root as default user. So don't uh, allow uh, images with, uh, without a user declaration in, in its Docker file, for example. We talk about uh, where to, to, to store the images, for example, uh, in, the, in a very secure way. Of course, we have a, uh, registries, which is a service where we are going to store images, and uh, always uh, we must uh, store images in a protected and secure registry using uh, authentication and uh, TLS for uh, our communication on that. Docker open uh, open source registry doesn't uh, manage authentication, for example, or any other kind of security, and is not suitable for production as is. We're going, uh, we have to add, uh, for example, a, a layer of security uh, for authentication. And of course, we prefer to use uh, Docker Trusted Registry, for example, because it has all these required layers. Uh, so for enterprise grade uh, content uh, management, we will use uh, Docker Enterprise with TLS, authentication, and authorization. And on the other hand, we have image signing is something that we're going to talk later. And of course, uh, scanning for vulnerabilities and exploits in our um, binaries and, and libraries. When building our images, and something that uh, usually uh, people uh, ask, uh, we try to start with the, uh, the smallest image possible because we know that it's going to grow because we're going to add some content. It's true that starting from scratch is always better, but it's harder and needs more practice. But of course, having an, um, uh, an image 
uh, build from scratch with just the binaries that you really need in your, uh, for your application, your component of your application is the best practice that you can have. We usually uh, add automation for uh, building images and is the key to ensure deployment to production uh, secure transitions when building this kind of images. We usually uh, add uh, access only to CI CD uh, workflow process to production and we keep isolated environments in all uh, CI CD stages. And uh, uh, when building new images, we usually if we need uh, uh, to enforce security. We, we can use the, the image unique digest, which is something uh, that you have to manage because it's, uh, you are forcing, if you're not going to use, for example, image signing, you are forcing to, to, to use a, a, a unique image, which is something very, very important, but uh, you will lose uh, some portability of, uh, or the, you are catching the, the evolution, the right evolution of your image. But it's something that will ensure uh, security, of course. Signing is uh, uh, image signing, of course, is uh, based on the update framework, and it's something that will ensure that no modified content uh, will uh, reach our uh, production environment. But uh, uh, for us, uh, um, there are other features that are very, very important too. It adds ownership. So we know that uh, who uh, creates or builds this image, something that uh, we really appreciate because uh, we know that we can trust this guy, for example, or this, this team, something very important. It allows full tracking, which is very important when uh, 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 deploying using CI CD because it will ensure that the, the, the right workflow has been followed. No one uh, has the um, real animate out of the workflow and it's, this image uh, has reached production, for example. It adds a uh, timestamp, will help to freshnet, as is the next point that we're going to talk. So timestamp is very important because if we, uh, something that we, we know that um, uh, we don't really like and something that uh, we usually try to avoid using latest, uh, as tagging, don't use latest, please. <laughs> so in case that you uh, add image, uh, image uh, signing, even if you are using always latest, you will, will ensure that the latest uh, image uh, will be used because of this uh, uh, timestamp that is uh, being added using signing. And this is something very important, and we have uh, the um, configuring many of our customer environments. We can disallow running non-signed uh, content in our cluster. That, uh, in this way, uh, no one uh, who tries to, to exploit uh, our environment using a non-signed image will uh, reach uh, production uh, and can run a container in production. We have, been, uh, we have mentioned freshness. Freshness is very important because we, uh, we usually try to, to, to deploy uh, the right image, the right release every time we deploy an application. When using Kubernetes, we can ensure the image freshness using uh, uh, always full image emission control, for example. This way, uh, Kubernetes will always download a fresh image even if it's really present in our host. So uh, every time we deploy uh, an application, a pod, uh, we know that the, 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 the latest uh, version or the latest release of our image is going to be deployed. And of course, as we, as we mentioned uh, before, image signing and Docker engine uh, with content trust enabled will ensure the VC image freshness too. And finally, uh, in, uh, when we talk about uh, um, uh, images, um, we mentioned uh, that image, in, uh, image uh, signing and content trust will ensure the ownership and the, that the, the, the content has not been changed. But uh, the, none of them will provide any validation of, of what is inside of our images. So for that purpose, we will use image scanning. 
to look for uh, vulnerabilities, vulnerabilities on any uh, of on any of our, our uh, components is our images. So we're going to uh, scan all of the releases of our images, even they are not production, because some case, uh, in some cases uh, our developers are going to deploy an, uh, an, uh, um, or, or build an image and use it for as base for all the images, for example. So we're going to try to, to um, scan all the images that reach our registry. And of course, we, we, can, uh, we can't allow uh, non-scanning images in production because in that case, we are not sure if it's not going to be uh, or, or if uh, there isn't any vulnerability present on them. Yeah, Javier, Javier this, this reminds me too, um, you know, last year at DockerCon, one of your fellow Docker captains, Michael Irwin, had a nice workshop about this topic where, you know, he teaches the users how to go into this mystery image um, and see all the files that are in there. There's nothing, you know, sort of magical about a, about a Docker image. It's fairly easy to get in there and see see what's inside it and um, you know he even shows you some files that maybe you thought you deleted but they're still there in the original image and he talks about things like multi-stage builds and, and other things that help you know in uh, get to exactly what you're talking about here where you really do get a minimal image that only has the things that you want um, inside it so I just want to put a shout out uh, for that there, there there's a link to that workshop so people that want to do it you know on their own uh, can run through it and that'll be um, you know, in the slides uh, that, that people can access later. Yeah, yeah, I remember that session, it, it was great. Uh, and uh, one thing that I, I reminds me uh, when talking about uh, multi-state builds is uh, when uh, in production, you get a, a, a host where uh, there are a lot of compilers and debugging uh, binaries. It's something weird because we don't usually or, um, unless we are in pre-production or even better in development stages, we are not going to deploy uh, um, a, a virtual machine with an application with uh, uh, compilers in, 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 in that host. So um, uh, it's something that uh, reminds me of uh, the old uh, bare metal and virtual machines uh, environment. So multi-staging is something that will ensure that only required components uh, are in present, will going to be present in our uh, uh, image. So it's something that we must use. And of course, uh, it will avoid any compiler or library that is not required just for building the image and is not required for running our application. Let's move to, to containers. Um, of course, uh, usually uh, people ask us if uh, containers are secure. Well, in fact, uh, containers are secure uh, by default because they were created with uh, isolation in mind. So we are um, we add to containers uh, some layers of isolation. Uh, um, of course, if we try to uh, always uh, keep just one. Uh, process per container that simplifies the way we are going to manage uh, this uh, kind of, con uh, of uh, environments, uh, I mean containers. If we use the, the well-known uh, process isolation uh, based on Kellen and space, on C groups, um, and of course, um, uh, if we have uh, uh, everything around uh, the, the the container itself uh, isolated. I mean, we are not going to use the host uh, um, file system. We are not going to use host um, uh, namespaces, of course. We are going to run our container with uh, control group isolation, with C uh, limit, uh, limited CPU, memory, IO. We are going to be sure that uh, our uh, container is running secure. So, if we take a look at how they are, uh, how, how containers uh, are deployed in our uh, host, they are just process with uh, layers of isolation. So, in fact, uh, out of box are more secure that, than just that process running in our environment. 
Uh, here we're going to go talk about capabilities because, the, of course, this process will run isolated and uh, there are many uh, system calls that we talked uh, uh, before uh, that our process is going to run or uh, going to 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 um, to, um, to execute in our system. You know that um, by default, Docker Enterprise, or do, sorry, the container engine, Docker, uh, Docker engine, will going to um, avoid 44 of uh, the, the most uh, unsecure uh, uh, of these uh, system calls. Of course, we can add capabilities to our uh, container if the whole ones are not enough. But uh, keep in mind that adding capability is something that you must uh, um, uh, review before uh, running, for example, uh, on privilege mode, because it will avoid all the security uh, deployed uh, by default uh, uh, from uh, Docker engine. Of course, we're going to talk about uh, security models again, again and again, because they will prevent that containers use uh, host resources uh, if you are not permitted. Uh, we talk about uh, how to mount, for example, uh, a file, uh, a host file, and uh, avoid uh, uh, writing or uh, changing its content with uh, C Linux. And of course, uh, if we want uh, to um, allow mounting uh, a file system inside uh, uh, our containers, we're going to uh, we, we're going to need to deploy a uh, um, um, C Linux profile, for example, or add a new um, uh, line uh, allowing this uh, uh, non standard file system inside our containers. We talk about C groups uh, to resource, uh, to, to limit uh, the resources and to ensure, uh, to ensure that containers run secure. Uh, we are not going to uh, allow. Uh, non-declared resources in containers. We mean uh, we are not going to uh, run containers without resource limits and requests because you know you don't not going to to know how they are going to grow. So you can get uh, out of the resources in your host. So when deploying pods uh, based on application uh, that allow them, and um, you're not going to um, uh, and, uh, you're not going to allow. If they are not uh, uh, have declared uh, requests uh, and limits, because they are harder to orchestrate, um, uh, they can uh, give you uh, problems if you run out of whole resources. Of course, don't run, don't run, uh, uh, don't allow a, a use of root inside containers, because. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, you're going to uh, allow someone uh, who is going to uh, change something in the kernel. You're going to run a, a process with a multiple, you can uh, change uh, the user's IDs of their process inside the container. And of course, you're going uh, to be able to run privileged ports. Something that uh, by default, uh, you're not going to allow. But of course, there are uh, some cases, some special cases. I, I um, usually uh, talk about monitoring tools, for example, that uh, really need to, 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 to be able to uh, ask uh, or, or um, yes, ask uh, resources from your host. So you need to use um, uh, host namespaces, for example. But it's something that we usually run in just in uh, red only mode, but uh, take care of uh, uh, containers that uh, run with uh, root inside uh, as usual. And of course, if you need to use root or map users for a special purpose in container, uh, you can use uh, what is called user namespaces. Uh, these are uh, maps that uh, this way your user inside the containers will be mapped to a, a host user with a local user ID. For example, uh, we can map uh, uh, our container root to uh, a user ID without any privilege 
in our host. If we continue with uh, uh, the access to our containers, for example, you don't usually uh, enter containers even for debugging. Uh, don't use the, 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 the process isolated namespaces of, of our container, for example. Don't use uh, production containers for debugging. There are other methods or stages uh, in our pipeline uh, for this kind of processors. And of course, we can use uh, application instrumentation on APMs for uh, this kind of, uh, of debugging. When we talk about logging, we, we talked uh, earlier, uh, all logging information uh, around containers, we usually manage uh, security out of our cluster. So we will prepare an, uh, with a, a syslog solution or a LK solution uh, with our uh, preferred tools for uh, logging uh, everything that uh, comes from uh, containers. Of course, uh, when orchestration is available, don't launch containers uh, because they, they're not going to be managed uh, uh, neither by uh, Kubernetes or Swarm. If you run containers uh, 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 with using Docker Run or Docker Container Run, uh, you're not going to be able to manage those containers inside the orchestration. In fact, you're not going to even see them. So if you use uh, your uh, Docker enterprise environment uh, uh, without uh, administration privileges. Uh, we usually add um, helpful metadata information uh, to containers uh, with the owner, the release information, and everything that uh, in general uh, can be useful in case of failure. So, it's good. Uh, it's a good practice to to add uh, metadata information to that uh, to that host kind of, uh, of resources. When we talk about uh, um, host resources, uh, of course, um, we only uh, require uh, we're not uh, we're going to dispose anything else than required ports or service components. Don't export ports that uh, that shouldn't be accessible, and of course. Don't use uh, host local resources uh, because they share host information and aren't prepared for portability. If you use a file that is only available in one of the hosts, it's not going to be uh, 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 available on another one. So only use host resources if they are strictly required. Um, there's uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, admission controllers allow us to um, uh, to manage what to do before scheduling a port on our cluster. So it's something that is uh, very important because allow us to change uh, the behavior or the port uh, before scheduling. There are some quick, uh, some uh, uh, very uh, important ones. Uh, I usually use always pool images that uh, enforce uh, the image uh, pooling uh, before scheduling any port in our cluster. Usually add uh, the deny scaling, uh, scaling uh, execution, which uh, denies uh, um, uh, execution or, or ports with uh, uh, escalated privileges. Uh, are, so we are avoiding uh, any kind of uh, host access. We can add the port security policy, which uh, there are a lot of rules that can be applied with this policy. Uh, and, uh, for example, we can uh, uh, allow the use of uh, host namespaces, uh, host networking, or, or of course, we can disallow on any port that uh, um, uh, have some kind of, of, uh, of level. Of course, uh, we, we will use uh, a mission controller for limit rates and resource quotas are uh, another restriction for limiting uh, some uh, uh, no uh, some ports to only uh, be able to run on a specific kubelets. And of course, uh, uh, containers uh, um, isolation uh, uh, um, um, uh, orchestration will be. Um, uh, uh, 
uh, improve with uh, orchestration. And when we need to, to take care of isolation, we will use namespaces in Kubernetes and different stacks uh, on Swarm. This, will, uh, uh, this way we will uh, have isolated proxies and uh, object access. Um, we have uh, role basics. If we add uh, the role basics uh, to this equation, we have a very secure uh, environment. In Kubernetes, because of, this, uh, uh, of its uh, flat network, um, we will use uh, what is called network policies to isolate the uh, networking between uh, pods. We want to talk uh, in next uh, slides. And we usually uh, add network policies to uh, allow uh, only uh, ingress and egress uh, specific traffic, for example. So we reach uh, our um, uh, environment. Uh, we'll need to publish the application. Because it's the main object of our cluster, uh, our, our um, container as a service platform, we need to provide uh, services to our internal or external customers. And uh, some of this uh, the security we're going to, to review right now is about the way we are going to publish. So the first question is going to be what to publish. Of course, uh, we're going to publish only uh, the components that are really required uh, to be able in our environment. So don't publish application components unless they are really, really required. Um, how to publish? Well, uh, both of orchestrators will provide uh, 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 the facilities to, uh, to publish uh, uh, our components. We have uh, what is called router mesh, uh, same as uh, node port services in Kubernetes world. We can use, uh, of course, the, the load balancer services in if we are deploying in a cloud environment, but the preferred way of publishing is using ingress-like resources because it's a, a unique um, a point of uh, publishing, which is uh, really good to manage. It's, uh, it's uh, simplest to manage. And uh, we can, if we need uh, some uh, isolation uh, regarding the, 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 the way we are going to publish uh, between different organizations, for example, we can't uh, deploy different ingress controllers. So uh, ingress controllers and interlock are the same kind of uh, um, uh, dynamic uh, reconf uh, reconfigured uh, uh, load balancing environment. And in fact, uh, are the better, uh, the better uh, management, uh, the better way of uh, publish application in uh, our uh, container as a service environment. And as we mentioned before, if we need a real isolation between uh, the deployments, we are going to deploy um, uh, stacks uh, on isolated networks and collections. If we use uh, Swarm, this is something that is uh, by default. And we are going to use uh, what uh, uh, network policies and namespaces spaces in the Kubernetes world. And of course, if an additional layer of isolation is required, for example, in multi-tenant environments, you can use the multiplayer uh, English controllers, for example, on different namespaces, of course. And um, in used uh, Swarm, uh, Swarm isolation will be based on deployment uh, of a specific networks and collection. And if we use uh, role basis access, uh, uh, multi tenant environments will be uh, allowed uh, if uh, we use the Docker Swarm uh, based orchestration. One thing that uh, always comes to mind when uh, deploying in, uh, or before, uh, um, uh, better to say, uh, when deploying uh, uh, publish uh, environments is the, the way we usually uh, deploy or publish the dashboard. One important recommendation is not to publish any platform dashboard to the internet. Uh, usually, uh, Kubernetes is not a good uh, uh, dashboard for uh, publishing out uh, with default um, 
default uh, settings. So we usually um, uh, deploy um, uh, Kubernetes dashboard with only uh, allowing only authentication access, uh, deploying in, uh, with using a secure uh, a service account with very very limited access and use uh, role basis access to all uh, resources that have been published in, uh, inside the, the Kubernetes dashboard. By default, Kubernetes is an uh, um, explicitly exposed uh, outside of the cluster, but someone with uh, the right access uh, or uh, a wrong access to the, the, the cluster can expose the dashboard to the internet. So avoid to to uh, uh, allow non uh, non uh, or very uh, or secure users to access the cluster. And um, of course, when we talk about how the, um, the 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 different components interact uh, with each other, uh, uh, the way that all the application uh, of the application components are going to talk is something that uh, is more related to the what is, is usually called the the east-west traffic in our cluster. Docker Swarm uh, by default uh, will deploy all uh, uh, each stack on uh, each uh, isolated network and will only uh, expose uh, what we have declared. So by default, uh, only um, um, components exposed uh, to uh, talk with components with uh, between uh, uh, other um, applications will be able to interact. This way, interaction between components deployed on different stacks will be uh, will need a different or a middle layer or router mesh intercommunication. So they are. Uh, Secure by default. Network policies. Uh, we will um, uh, be able to to uh, manage ingress and egress traffic between ports, and we will use them as first security endpoint for point-to-point um, -point communications uh, uh, between a API port segments. A good example, for example for a default network policy will be uh, denying all ingress traffic, for example, with port selectors. So uh, all ports in my environment will uh, deny ingress uh, traffic unless uh, it is required. required. Um, we can add uh, uh, policies for required uh, port and protocol, and of course, a scope in, in between namespaces. And egress traffic can be uh, less restrictive on, or if we need to, to have a isolation uh, from internet, we can uh, deploy a negress traffic, uh, a negress uh, rule for uh, denying all egress traffic too. This uh, piece we mentioned before um, when deploying uh, uh, application uh, with um, interaction between the, its components uh, uh, can be managed with uh, an, an additional uh, piece uh, at level seven, for example. This means that applications that will require authentication and, authentica and authentication, for example, to talk with each, uh, between each other uh, will have a, a new piece uh, available. For example, we can use um, uh, API management or service mesh. There are different approaches for the uh, same kind of problem. API management uh, uh, will add a, a new intercommunication service uh, between uh, instances and, of course, require more, uh, more work for uh, uh, more management and service mesh. On the other hand, is um, the new model of dynamic intercommunication. 
in both cases, we will use TLS for inter-service communication, but in the, the main difference between them, we rely on how to implement this piece. While API management uh, will require manual configuration on backends and interaction, service mesh will provide the tooling for dynamic configuration of these pieces. For example, use sidecar proxies and that uh, will ensure that all traffic uh, will be proxied for better uh, performance and security. As takeaways for uh, to finish this uh, this webinar, we will talk about uh, or have been talking about uh, the planning of your network. Securing your host and resources, require TLS and authentication of all the communication between your components, use or base access to cluster resources, always use uh, security content in your images, don't allow privileged containers, don't run containers without orchestration because you know that uh, those containers will run on the while. Isolate the stacks and deployments using the, the orchestration uh, tooling. Use English controllers because they provide a single point of access control and they are easier to manage. And use service mesh uh, for intercommunication. Uh, uh, and uh, this, this way you will have uh, TLS uh, by default and secure communication in your uh, deployments. And of course, the, the most important thing is uh, that you, you don't really uh, need to be a paranoid in security because your environment will probably be secure uh, by default, but know the risks and manage them with the tools that you have uh, at hand. And, uh, uh, knowing that uh, you have a lot of tools uh, to be able to manage uh, security in, uh, uh, in your container as a service platform is the best way to, to uh, allow any risk in your platform. Thank you. All right. Do you have something? Yeah, yeah. Thanks again. That was that was awesome. That was uh, very thorough, and I really appreciate you covering those things. Um, do want to point out again? There's a few a uh, few additional links here um, for some additional resources. There is a uh, of course a, a series of webinars um, that the Docker produces that you can go to if you want to get uh, some additional information and get uh, some some additional details about the Docker Enterprise platform itself. Um, Javier, I think, uh, mentioned this once, but there is a, a, a tool called Docker Bench you can get. It's a free tool um, to do some analysis of your Docker security settings. Um, so I encourage people to check that out if you want to get more hands-on training. We also offer security classes. And then uh, in the deck itself, uh, for people that want to download the, uh, the presentation, there is another page that has a full set of uh, references and links to uh, a number of other places that, that Javier was uh, was gracious enough to put together for everybody. So I encourage you to uh, to grab that and and go through some of those uh, links as well, including the link to the uh, the workshop, uh, the DockerCon workshop about um, you know images and things like that that we talked about earlier. So that'll wrap up the uh, the webinar. Appreciate it. Thanks. We'll take some questions. Thanks, Hal. Yes, thank you, Javier and Jim. Let's now go ahead and open up to Q&A. I saw some questions coming in during the presentation. Um, if you haven't typed any in, now's the time to do so. Just go on over to that questions window and drop your questions in there. We can have Javier and, and Jim take those for you. Um, Javier, I'll go ahead and turn over to you. Do you see some questions that you can start answering? Yes, yes. Uh, I would try to 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 start with uh, the, few, the, the first ones that comes that were more related to the security models. I, I remember that I, I uh, someone asked about the, the profiles when I say that uh, Docker and, uh, will uh, provide some profiles for each uh, secure model. That's okay, that, that's right. Um, uh, there are, um, 
we have been talking about SecCom and Docker provides uh, some of the capabilities that are not allowed. So it's something that we can change. That's a, a kind of profile. Uh, we have been talking about the PP Armor and, and in fact, we can add uh, uh, or use our custom uh, customized uh, um, profile for some uh, container, some specific container. I can uh, give you uh, a link if, if you if you want, because uh, there is uh, in Docker documentation how to use a specific profile for a PP Armor. And in fact, uh, there are um, uh, some um, examples of how to uh, use uh, binded, uh, binded host uh, volumes uh, on your containers when security, uh, uh, sorry, C, uh, C Linux is enabled. So it's uh, another way of profiling your security models. So uh, as I told you, uh, Docker provides some default profiles for each of the uh, security models that are enabled or, or you can or should enable on your um, environment. The second question I have seen is about logging. Um, someone asked if it's a good idea to have a different or, or a, at least a remote source, uh, sorry, a, a remote um, destination for our login. In fact, it's uh, something that you, you should use because the, having a centralized uh, environment for uh, just a few uh, uh, notes, for example, is something that uh, someone can ask. Uh, do you really need it? But when you deploy a cluster with uh, maybe a hundred of, of nodes, it's very, very important to have a, a common uh, reference for all your login. And we, we usually recommend uh, use different uh, levels of, secu of security in login because uh, there are logs related to your OS, your operating system. There are logs related to your cluster environment. I mean, Docker uh, engine and Swarm environment or Kubernetes. We, so, uh, so we can isolate from uh, the, the, if we have different teams uh, working with uh, different kind of, uh, of issues or, or, or problems in our environment. And of course, we can uh, even isolate uh, container logging because our logs can use a different destination for our logging or, or, or we, we have to be ensured that only uh, people will go into, that we're going to work with our application, we have uh, access to this kind of logging. So in fact, it's, it's a good uh, um, um, recommendation to use different uh, logins, or at least if you, are, you use the same platform for all your environments, uh, have isolated uh, access to different kind of logins. I have seen a question about uh, if serving mesh with uh, will uh, uh, allow us or add more security. In uh, some, it's because that the, this uh, answer, this question uh, came from uh, the beginning of the the. the the webinar. I'm sure that uh, I have uh, covered some of the of the main features of service mesh regarding to security, but uh, we can uh, review it uh, very quick. Uh, um, service mesh will provide security out of box. So if we haven't, uh, if our developers uh, haven't uh, taken it into account when talking about uh, the tunneling, uh, um, authentication, uh, isolation between networks. So it's, it's true uh, that the uh, service mesh out of box will add some security that maybe our developers uh, haven't uh, taken when they deploy our, uh, their application. So it's something that is, uh, is going to be a, a very useful uh, in our environment. Um, some people is true that have asked about um, how to ensure uh, security in images. Well, uh, Docker Enterprise provides uh, security scanning, which is a very uh, uh, important tool it's an, uh, that provides a, a bill of materials of everything that is in, uh, in our images. And of course, uh, as uh, I think that I have um, tried to, to explain in, in the talk, it's true that we usually um, try to, to, to get 
uh, as uh, as, ma uh, as as much as possible in uh, images because um, it's true that we have a uh, um, having a, the, the small possible um, say, um, uh, super surface of attack is better because you uh, you will only have everything that is only needed in your uh, uh, environment in your um, application and in fact building images from scratch is even better because you only have the binaries and libraries needed really needed for your application so starting with uh, uh, common use uh, um, uh, base uh, OS is something that we usually do but in fact having uh, you have to notice that you probably will have a lot of uh, binaries that you're not going to use so uh, uh, try to 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 realize that uh, having uh, the small amount of uh, binaries will provide um, a secure environment for your application and uh, finally uh, and, uh, someone asked about how to ensure that the, the cycle or uh, security cycle between images is um, how to provide that the uh, secure uh, cycle when we try to to update images we usually use uh, ci cd to to have um, uh, cascading uh, or cas some updating cascade using for example um, uh, this uh, um, uh, secure scanning on our base images so if we, we find that there's some Kind of trouble or easy in some of our images, we will probably will update that image and um, um, trigger our CI/CD environment to build all the images that have this uh, this base image as base image, of course. So it's, some, it's something that you usually automate to have a, um, an environment with uh, a lot of changes and as secure as possible, uh, updating almost everything you can. Oh, okay. There's someone asking about uh, how security scanning or the, the best security scanning uh, tools for for uh, images. As I told you, Docker Enterprise provides uh, this uh, kind of scanning. There are other tools uh, I have used it, and there are uh, some uh, tools that provide the uh, our uh, open sources and it's true that what, what we the, uh, usually they they usually do is uh, uh, take a, a full scan of your all the components that you have in your uh, image have a, a bill of materials so a list of all the all the, the components with the hashes they have and if they found that there there are some issues uh, looking for this component in uh, um, external database in, in case of uh, docker enterprise uh, they provide their own uh, database with uh, uh, cvs so you you can um, uh, try to find that is there an issue in this component so you will have a report with uh, all the possible issues that you can have in your images which is uh, some uh, is very um, uh, useful to to find if your images are uh, clean of uh, issues, or you have to uh, maybe update some of the components that they are uh, that are uh, built inside your your images. Uh, I can't see any other question. I I, I think yeah, that I have. Looks... A... Yeah, I think you I think you hit all of them, Javier. Um, so we thank you all for your great questions. If there's any, um, you know, coming in, we'll record those and make sure we get those responded back to you. However, at this point, this does conclude our webinar. So again, I want to thank you all for joining us. Thank you for the great questions. And of course, thank you to our speaker today, Javier Ramirez. A reminder that today's session was recorded and you will receive a copy of this recording via email and you will receive it within the next 24 hours. Again, thank you all for taking time out of your day to join us, and we hope to see you next time at the next Docker webinar. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you all.